Okay, uh, I'm Kate Evans. I currently work as a design lead with HMRC, which is um, the tax office basically. And uh, I've been in design, content design for about, oh gosh, um, since about 2002, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I studied um, a media and communications degree at the University of Middlesex, Middlesex mm -hmm. University, and that was largely focusing on writing the written word in different media. Um, in terms of, it wasn't a huge amount of digital stuff in there, but it was a lot of print media, there was some mm -hmm. screenplay, radio stuff as well. Um, but previously to that, uh, I chose my A-levels based on um, my interests at the time, which were English language, psychology, and computing. And I think actually my choice of A-levels probably had more of an influence on what I've started to do as a career um, than my degree did. Now I'm a content designer working in digital. Um, I use all of those things. So I use psychology, I use uh, the language, English language, and uh, yeah, my understanding of of computers and technology. So my first job was um, content editing really for a small website. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a website aimed at writers and uh, I learned, so it was, a, it was a very basic content job, but I learned about how to produce content for the web and how it was different to content for print or for any other media. And uh, something just clicked. I just loved it. Um, I loved the fact that you needed to be aware of how people interact with the screen, how you know the resolution is lower, how you need to um, you need to write in a certain way to make sure that people are encouraged to read more, and the sort of relationship as well between the content and the design elements, and how they're very much intertwined. You can't really have one without the other. So, yeah, something clicked and just went from there. Stayed in content design always. Was that that time when you found out that content design is the thing you want to do? I think I think it was that first job. Yeah, I think I was lucky, really, because I know some people um, maybe study something a bit different and then sort of fall into design, fall into UX. But um, yeah, for me, I think I was quite lucky that uh, my first job in the in this role in this kind of world was yeah the one that the one that stuck for me. Can you describe your second job? Was it again content designer? Uh, my second job was probably a bit more like a digital producer. So I was doing content, but um, this was back in the days of Dreamweaver, and uh, this is kind of before content management systems became the the big thing. Um, so yeah, I did a bit of kind of visual design, uh, such as it was back then. Uh, it wasn't, you know, <laughs> it wasn't very. Um, I'm certainly not, you know, a skilled visual designer, but it was back in those days where if you could use Dreamweaver, you could do anything. Um, so yeah, I, I did a bit of content, bit of visual design, information architecture. This was working with a, a local authority in London, uh, working on an education um, website for them. So it involved lots of kind of conversations with subject, what we now call subject matter experts. We didn't have the terminology around things back then that we do now. Um, but yeah, lots of conversations with SMEs and uh, information architecture work, planning the content with them and doing the kind of visual design um, of the website as it grew as well. Were there any other jobs in digital before you became a design lead in HMRC? Yes, many, because I've, I've always been a contractor, so I've moved around um, a lot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've never worked anywhere for longer than about two years, two and a half years. So, I guess in terms of, well, actually the next job I had, if you want to call it a job, um, after the uh, local authority, was I, I moved to Manchester and I started a small digital agency. Um, I was working with my brother, who's a developer, um, so and we had a, a, a designer as well. So the three of us worked together uh, as a small agency working in Manchester, doing small kind of small business websites there for a couple of years. Um, so that was really tough, <laughs> um, but obviously quite rewarding to run your own business. And um, I learned quite a lot, I think, just about you know what 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 it takes to be commercially viable or not. In the end, I think it probably wasn't that commercially viable. And um, yeah, so it didn't, it didn't last much longer than the two years. And then I went into contracting um, uh, and it went to a few, few other places, but ended back up in London, um, mm -hmm. where the, you know, there's quite a strong market for 
for digital and contractors. And um, in the time that I'd been away, I guess the market for design and UX and those things was starting to to really kind of more than emerge. I guess it was more, you know, establishing itself, um, which it hadn't really been before. Uh, so, yeah, I've worked a lot with government. I've worked with um, government agencies, uh, a couple of other central government departments. I've worked with a small software house as well. Um, probably one of the highlights was working for the Natural History Museum, um, just because it's such an amazing place and full of academics who are really passionate and knowledgeable. And, uh, you know, I got to go behind the scenes of the museum and go into all the old little dusty corridors and, um, you know, look at specimens that people have catalogued for the last hundred years or something. That was. That was really interesting, and I worked on two different projects for the museum, um, both of which I got to work quite closely with the scientists on, um, which was really good, really, really exciting. So let's move to your current job. So what are your responsibilities at this moment? At this moment, so I work with about, um, I'd say probably about 20 different service teams. So a service team will be working on a particular digital service or product, you might call it. Um, and so I work with the designers, that's interaction designers or UX designers as you might call them, content designers and service designers. Um, and I work with the wider team as well, but more closely with the, with the designers in those teams to, um, to make sure that uh, the stuff they're doing is uh, of good quality, that they're supported to do their work they need to do. Um, that they understand the standards that we work to as well, so HMRC standards and cross-government standards. Um, I do quite a lot of recruitment, so I do a lot of interviewing um, and uh, yeah, re just sort of general recruitment activities. And I also sit on um, the panel to do um, assessments and reviews as well. So mm -hmm. we, uh, we, our services go through um, a round of, well, several rounds of assessment and reviews depending on what stage they're at. So um, I'm quite often on the panel as a design assessor. We already talked about this assessment with Pietro previously, but can you just shortly describe all the process, what, what the assessment is, basically? Sure, okay. So, uh, uh, services in government, or what well, we call them services, some people call them products, but let's, let's say services. Um, they go through a, a, a phased approach, so um, a standard approach is uh, discovery, alpha, private beta, public beta, and then live. Uh, at each phase point, there'll be an assessment. So moving from one phase to another, moving from private beta to public beta, um, we would do an assessment. So um, that assessment is either uh, an internal assessment where HMRC is um, putting putting the panel together itself, or it's done by and uh, led by GDS, the Government Digital Service, where they put a panel together. And the difference is the size of the service, basically the number of transactions. So if a service has over 100,000 transactions a year, GDS will assess it. Uh, and if it has under 100,000 transactions a year, then we, HMRC, just assess it ourselves. The assessments don't just look at design. Design are, is you know, some of the, um, the, the digital service standards that, that we use are uh, based on design. Some of them are based on user research. Some of them are based on technology. Um, some of them are based on agile practices, so there's um, 18 different points that we assess against. Uh, so the panel needs to be made up of a range of people who can uh, assess each of those points, really. All right, you talked about uh, some standards you have to keep across all services, am I right? Mm -hmm. It makes sense that all the time when a service or product is launched to public, there is a consistency across all all of them. Mm -hmm. So my question is, uh, do you have something like pattern libraries or is there any system? Yes, there is. So one of the standards, one of the 18 points in the standards is all about consistency with gov.uk, um, which is really more about consistency with um, all, of the, all of the services that are being developed across government, including gov.uk. Um, and to do that, yeah, we have a pattern library that um, that we use, so there's a, uh, it's all in the open, anyone can go and find it, um, it's uh, part of the service manual, so if you were to Google design patterns, 
gov.uk, you'd come across it. Um, and they're quite well catalogued design patterns that we have, um, service patterns as well, so sort of higher level than design patterns. So that might be, um, say there's a, a particular service that is repeated in general terms across government. So I'm trying to think of one. Um, there's, a, there's a service pattern called check before you start which is, a, a, you know, if you're applying for something through government, you probably need to do some stuff or know some stuff before you do it. You might want to check your eligibility, for example, before you start the full process. So that's an example of a service pattern that exists that's been designed and tested um, and iterated and, and, yeah, it's quite robust. And GDS have developed that uh, in conjunction with other departments. So... Um, yeah, so there's service patterns, design patterns, and then there's a component level library as well, so more kind of lower level, more granular styles and, and patterns at that level. And all this stuff is available online at this moment? Yes, yeah, it's all available, it's all in the open, yeah. How do you keep your design, design skills up to date? Um, so my role now, because I'm, I'm more involved in kind of supporting and leading teams from a design point of view, I, I, I don't do a huge amount of designing myself, but I do do quite a lot of critiquing of other services. So I think that really helps me actually to, to hone my design skills. And I get, you know, I'm lucky, I get exposed to the work of so many different designers um, that I get to see a lot of people's, you know, a lot of different people's work and, um, and I get to, you know, critique it and hopefully support them to do a uh, better job, either work more in line with the standards and patterns or just to maybe think a bit differently about their mm -hmm. approach. So I think that's probably the, yeah, the way that I am uh, honing my own design skills mm -hmm. at the moment. Is there for you anybody who's your kind of like design guru? I think, you know, in the, in the earlier days, I was a really big fan of Steve Krug. Uh, I think it's kind of, yeah, everybody's probably read, <laughs> read his stuff. Um, but I think the, the, the thing that's probably affected my career the most was um, the prominence that the government digital service gave to content design as a profession. So um, they really took the first steps, I think, to, to take what was known as a web editor and actually say, you know, these people are designers, they're designers in the same way that interactional UX designers are designers. And in fact, we don't even want to use the term UX designer anymore because it somewhat undermines content designers and takes away some of that you know, responsibility for the user experience that they have. So um, there's probably individual people I could point to who were at GDS who did a lot of that groundwork. Uh, at the time, so Sarah Richards and Pad McGillan, people like that who were um, really responsible for shaping what content design in government looked like and was in the early days of um, government digital service and I'd probably say that's probably had the strongest influence on yeah, where my, how my career has ended up being so melded now with interaction design, which is great. You said you are also recruiting people. Um, how would you describe like the best designer in skills? I look for kind of, you know, the core UX skills, so an understanding of users, um, a good process, so not just jumping straight into visual design. Say, I, you know, I, I want to be able to see from people's portfolios that they, that they have a, a process that involves research and testing and starting with quite low fidelity uh, work building up to something that's more interactive. Um, that's on the interaction designer side. On the content designer side, um, for me, it's all about can this person take some complex information and make it very simple, um, which is a really difficult skill, I think, and, and possibly an undervalued skill in some areas. Um, so there's those kind of core design skills that are that are really front and foremost, I think, but. Um, what I need designers to have who come and work with me in HMRC is really strong communication skills as well. So being able to talk about their work very clearly, advocate for design within the service team and make sure that the, the rest of the service team understands their role. Um, and the other key thing for us in government is being able to work with stakeholders. So 
we, we have our bit of HMRC, which is HMRC Digital, and the rest of HMRC is, I don't know, something like 64,000 other people who are, don't really do Agile, they, they don't really understand design in the way that we do, but they've got a goal, a business goal that they're, that they're trying to meet and they've got probably a very strong idea of how they want to meet it as well. So we need designers um, to, who join us to be able to work with those stakeholders, take them on a bit of a journey, um, understand what they need, but also advocate for what the user needs as well. Um, and that's really crucial for us. What do you think that is the next big thing in, in digital design? I think I'm starting to think that... Um, and I, I have to say I'm not the expert in this, but it's something that we're looking into, is kind of um, conversation design and uh, voice interaction as well. So there's something that we're hoping to um, to get into. Actually, there's a, there's a guy called Tom Hewitson who we've been talking to, who's quite an expert in this area. I think he's working with Facebook at the moment, but he's, he has his own um, consultancy. So, yeah, for us, I think, yeah, we're going to be looking into that kind of voice interaction and, and what conversation design means in the digital age. So whether that's virtual assistants or, um, you know, just just a, a different way of interacting with a, with a website. Do you think that designing for uh, voice UI will be, will be different than in terms of content than your current, let's say, processes? I think it will be quite different, yeah. I think people have different expectations around um, around how you interact verbally than how you interact through a, a visual medium or a written medium. So, yeah, I think it's definitely a lot of crossover. So, um, you know, in terms of having a conversational tone to the content that we produce at the moment, yeah, we, we try and strive for that. But having a conversational tone in in the written word I think is quite different to having it in a verbal medium or an oral medium so yeah I think it's going to be quite different for us but um, yeah, it's early days at the moment Do you think the technical background for or art background is, is better when you're a designer? I, I think probably the best designers that I've worked with interaction designers have had a mix of, of both so they may have started in an art based world and and had some kind of interest in technology or the other way around um, and I, I when I'm recruiting I don't mind actually I don't really look that much this sounds a bit bad I don't really look at what people studied um, I'm more interested in their work now and and uh, how their work speaks for them as you know as designers now. Thank you very much for participating in UX for free and maybe see you again sometime. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I'm, I'm interested to know how, how it goes and uh, yeah, hopefully your, um, your work here will just grow and grow because I think it is, it's quite needed, yeah, isn't it? Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you.